Well, it's with great pleasure that I introduce Granaz Musabi, and it's such an extraordinary film that we've just seen. And unfortunately, Granaz is not here to be with us, but she's here on Zoom talking to us about this extraordinary film. Welcome. Hi, um, I, I would like to say hello to everyone. Um, it would have been a complete different experience if I could be there with the audience. Um, but yeah, it's just great that um, I have all these lovely people watching the film on behalf of me. <laughs> yes, I know. And it must be a very weird experience for you to have your film premiere and not be able to be there. Yeah, it's surreal. <laughs> and this film has been a long time in the making. Let's just talk a little bit about how this began. This really what started with you seeing a story on Australian television. Is that true? Yes, yes. Um, and I used the, the very story um, that I saw first, that was the initial um, ignite to the script. I used that in the body of the film in basically end of the film. The film ends with that actual newsreel footage. Um, and that was, um, yeah, just by complete, um, you know, coincidence, I was just watching TV when I saw that and that triggered um, this idea and the urge basically that I needed to do something. And as a filmmaker, well, I could only make a film. So um, yeah, I started writing the script in 2013 and continued working on it um, until it happened. Was it the way it was reported or that there was not many details or, or the responsibility of what happened? Is that what drove you to want to make a film about this? Well, um, I was in Australia, like the um, majority of our nation. I was in Australia hearing something about another part of the world that we as a nation um, had great role in it. So, um, and coming from that area originally, knowing the language and culture, obviously that kind of makes it an emotional bridge. Um, it kind of, you know, I, I, felt, um, I felt divided in two parts emotionally, really. And um, uh, also the way that it was um, delivered, that news that you see in the film too. Well, um, it's just strange that people don't get a face in mainstream media um, when it comes to us, the idea of us and others, when it comes to us, we always have faces, we always have names, stories, families, narratives, some sense of closeness, some sense of, um, you know, humanity in it. But when it comes to others, then all of a sudden people don't have faces, children don't have names, they don't have stories, they don't have families. It's kind of, it's some, um, uh, it was obviously we know about this but when it comes to your face like that I really felt I had to do something so this film came to be as a matter of necessity really how crazy do people think that for you to actually go and film in Afghanistan and how difficult was it <laughs> well um very difficult um basically you you just have to make the path um because um, even Afghan filmmakers, um, they, I haven't seen any film that um, was made with so many exterior scenes. So we were taking great risk in showcasing Kabul. Um, I actually filmed in um, majority of um, um, areas of Kabul known to Kabulians. Um, like monumental um, places in Kabul, they are all in the film. So, because it was important to give a sense of geography to the narrative. We are talking about real people, real incidents, uh, trying to portray people that they don't find their ways in mainstream media. So obviously within the context of um, physical geography too. So geography plays a great role in um, this portrayal. So um, obviously Kabul um, was a character from the beginning in the script and it became, um, it started to grow as um, I 
continued um, living and working there and rewriting the script. But it was very risky. We had um, like within two weeks of um, filming in one location, in one symmetry in Kabul, there was an explosion only while we were filming in this very same um, place that we filmed. So in two weeks, there was an explosion and we were all kind of silent, just 14 days apart. Very brave. How was it I mean, to live there? I mean, to spend so much time there. Well, um, I think um, I consider myself really fortunate to have um, such great supports in Kabul. I have made really wonderful friends for life, I think. Um, well, when I went to Kabul as a poet, I was already known to the um, literary um, scenery in Kabul. So I was um, welcomed by my um, friend poets. So I had a couple of poetry reading sessions in Kabul and subsequently I started meeting people, journalists and writers and poets. And um, I couldn't um, make the film without their help. Also, I started, you know, obviously going to places, talking to other um, Aussie and European freelancers, how they found their feet in that environment. Obviously, I had the advantage of knowing the language, uh, working as an interpreter for um, two decades, working for Iranian Afghan community. I had access to language and I started learning a little bit of Pashto along the way. <laughs> and um, yeah, obviously having an Afghan producer on the side, having the support of the Iranian producer Marzia from Tehran, um, obviously it was great help. There's like the scene, you know, where the boy has to take the camera inside because the cameraman's not allowed inside. How open are they to showing, you know, you show sort of fairly, I guess, intimate details of the culture and uh, how, um, how willing were they to be able to, to show that? <laughs> It took, it took um, a lot of work and time was a crucial factor because to make something like this, um, to make a film at this scale, uh, working with non-actors and so many children and obviously so many families were involved because they were allowing their kids to take part in a multinational co-production. So in, in during the war, so you can imagine like we were all kind of foreigners or semi-foreigners and you know in the heart of Afghanistan trying to tell people's stories so there was I felt really great responsibility over my shoulders not only um, because I wanted to get as close as possible to the reality everyday realities of people's lives but also see pe people's kids were involved so it took a lot of um, time to build up um, that connection and relationship with um, our actors and non-actors, it, it definitely went beyond casting. Casting, the word casting <laughs> doesn't do justice for um, the relationship that was uh, worked on for a long time to make this happen. Talk about the kids, they're amazing, You're saying they're all non-actors. I mean, how did you how did you find them? During year and a half, um, I basically, I was all eyes <laughs> when I walked on the streets, when I, um, you know, when I went anywhere in Kabul and when, wherever that I traveled to, I was just watching out. I was just looking for potential actors, children who were interested. And um, um, well, every little child was potentially an actor in my <laughs> eyes at that time. And it took me a long time to find the main character. And finally, he came from hundreds of kilometers away from Kabul, from another province. I also ran um, some acting workshop for Kabul Circus. And Kabul Circus um, recruits children who are interested in physical activities. And um, it's, an, it's run by an NGO. So I, um, I started meeting with them and uh, the condition was to run an, an acting workshop. So, um, and it's, it's really, um, I really like that culture of give and take. So um, you basically just give something to an organization to be able to then 
take it back. So um, I ran a workshop in that circus and a few of um, the children actors came out of those workshops and classes. How excited are they now about the film being made oh. and coming out? <laughs> So, so excited. There are still some of them who have access to um, Facebook and Messenger. Uh, they don't leave me alone constantly. Text me, when are we going to watch the film? What's happening? Why is it taking so long? <laughs> <laughs> you have to show them this and go, we all say hello. <laughs> yes. Um, so just obviously as a filmmaker, you take a long time between projects because you pick very difficult films to make. Uh, what keeps driving you and, 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 you know, to keep at something for so long? <laughs> oh, the life of a filmmaker, I guess. Filmmakers know what I'm talking about. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's just um, soul, mind and physical consumption <laughs> over a long period of time. But um, I think I just had um, a great will and that uh, gave me um, fuel, really. That passion that I have for Afghanistan and Afghan people and the um, urge to do something um, for ongoing wars, especially if we have role in it. Well, that gives me enough fuel to go on. How much are you hoping if people see this film? What, um, what are you hoping sort of, I guess, the message is, if that's a, a simplistic way of, of putting it? I think telling stories is a is big part of um, our life in 21st century, really. Like what, what we need is stories from different angles. Media has a great role in... Um, uh, in engineering and um, fabricating mentality for us people, viewers, audience. And um, we really need independent, freelance, alternative views on what's going on. So um, this is just a very small film, but I really appreciate um, every single person who's um, going beyond um, and trying to find um, narratives and let others know. How important are film festivals, you know, which of course, uh, you know, we're lucky here in Adelaide that we are getting to see this in a cinema, but you know, film festivals have been pretty devastated around the world at this point. How important are they to represent a film like this and be able to get them to an audience? Oh, crucial. Yeah. Honestly, there's some, um, I think, well, um, this case, this example, I think is a good example to convince funding by these film festivals, um, state-run organizations to support independent films in Australia. Well, we can't survive, like this, this nar these narratives, these individual point of views on stories, um, we, we can't survive without help. That's the, you know, ultimate truth that independent cinema, art house cinema needs support. Um, uh, and, you know, a presentation too, like um, how possibly could I make this film and could I um, show it to people if it wasn't for the support of Adelaide Film Festival, South Australian Film Corporation. And I have to... Um, I have to say, I, I really want to thank the Netherlands Embassy in Kabul too. They helped us right in the middle to, um, to finish the film. Like if I finished filming, it was because of their support. They were the first one who stepped in and um, yeah, they, I never forget that. Uh, well, it's a great pleasure to speak with you and I know the audiences here in Adelaide have embraced the film. It's an extraordinary film uh, and thank you so much for talking to us. Sorry you're not here, <laughs> but we're so grateful to have a chance to speak to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your good questions. Thank you.